Greetings and welcome to our October series in Connect. That's what we call our Sunday School here at Pilgrim. So if you haven't joined us before, welcome and we're glad to have you join us. Today our theme is called Running the Race and we'll find out what kind of race that is. But it comes from the scripture this morning from the Bible, from the book of Philippians. Who knows what part of the Bible that's in? Is it the New Testament or the Old Testament? That's right, the New Testament. And look at here, it's way at the back of the Bible. So that's where Philippians comes in. Now, this part of the Bible was written by Paul, who was a follower of Jesus, but he wasn't always a follower. In fact, in the beginning, he was pretty cruel to those who were followers of Jesus. He only cared about what he said and what he did. But once he met Jesus, he realized that Jesus should be the focus of his life, and he changed what he cared about and what he said. So this morning, our scripture is Philippians, and here's what it sounds like. Let's read it together. I don't mean that I'm exactly what God wants me to be. I have not reached that goal, but I continue trying to reach it and make it mine. That's what Christ Jesus wants me to do. It is the reason he made me his. Brothers and sisters, I know that I still have a long way to go, but there's one thing I do. I forget what is the past and try as hard as I can to reach the goal before me. I keep running hard toward the finish line to get the prize that is mine because God has called me through Christ Jesus to live up there in heaven. Did you notice the words that I had highlighted in the scripture? Those are the ones that we're going to focus on today, and we'll talk about them a little bit as we go along. Now, I brought something along today that I want you to take a look at. Have you ever won a medal like this, or a ribbon, or a trophy for some kind of sport, or science event, or a spelling bee, or some musical event? It makes you feel pretty good, doesn't it? And how did you get good at whatever that was for you to be able to win something? It's practice, right? Well, this was Ethan's medal that he won for wrestling and he had to practice every day. He had to practice his moves with other op opponents. He had to keep his weight at a certain weight because you're in a certain weight class and so he had to take care of that he had to learn all the rules for wrestling because that's how he would get farther in it and he had to do some weight training and some running so all of those things were ways that he got better at wrestling by practicing following the rules and not quitting so that's how he got better would Ethan have won this medal if he would have quit? Of course not. The only way to get it is to work hard, to practice, and to finish the season in this case, or to finish running the race. You know, running the race reminds me of a famous fable. Do you know what a fable is? Right, it's a story that has a message at the end. And one of the most famous fables about finishing the race is the tortoise and the hare. If you don't quite remember the whole story, we're gonna go through a little short version of it right now. The tortoise and the hare. One day a hare was bragging how fast he could run. He bragged and bragged and even laughed at the tortoise who was so slow. The tortoise stretched out his long neck and challenged the hare to a race, which of course, made the hare laugh. My, my, what a joke, thought the hare. A race, indeed, a race. Oh, what fun. My, my, a race, of course. Mr. Tortoise, we shall race, said the hare. The forest animals met and mapped out the course. The race begun, and the hare, being such a swift runner, 
soon left the tortoise far behind. About halfway through the course, it occurred to the hare that he had plenty of time to beat the slow-trodden tortoise. Oh my, thought the hare, I have plenty of time to play in the meadow here. So he did. After the hare finished playing, he decided that he had time to take a little nap. I have plenty of time to beat that tortoise, he thought, and he cuddled up against a tree and dozed. The tortoise, in the meantime, continued to plod on, I'll bet, it ever so slowly. He never stopped, but took one good step after another. The hare finally woke up from his nap. Time to get going, he thought, and off he went faster than he had ever run before. He dashed as quickly as anyone could ever up to the finish line, where he met the tortoise, who was patiently awaiting his arrival. The end. Well, I bet you can figure out what the message was supposed to be from that fable. It was to follow the rules, because the hare didn't. Keep on running the race. The hare took a little break because he thought he knew better, but the tortoise followed the rules and kept steady and didn't quit and was the winner at the end. I'm also going to add in bragging because the hare was a pretty big bragger, wasn't he? Do you know what a bragger is? Someone who tells you they know the best or they're the best at anything. For example, you might say to your friend who might be a bragger, I read this great book in five days. And they say, oh, I read that book in two days. In fact, I wrote a whole book in the five days that you read that book. That's a bragger. And how does that make you feel? Not very good, does it? Okay, so let's take a look at those highlighted words again from our scripture. I am exactly what God wants right now. I should keep trying to do what Jesus wants me to do. I should keep running the race, not quitting along the way, but all the way to the finish line. I'm going to add two in about bragging because it's not about what we say and do. That's not where we should get our strength from. Our strength should come from what God tells us to say and do. Today, we're going to end with a little game. Now, it's called, What Do You Choose? We know in life, there's always gonna be something a little better around the corner, but we're never quite sure. So I'm giving you a little example. I have here a penny, a nickel, and a dime. If I told you to choose one, which one would you choose? I'm pretty sure you would choose the dime. And why is that? Well, because it's worth the most, isn't it? This is only worth one cent, five cents, and 10 cents. So I bet you feel pretty good with your choice. So you have kept the dime. So now I've called somebody else up and this time I've added a quarter. Well, I bet you're feeling a little cheated that you chose the dime and you didn't have the quarter to choose from. That just doesn't quite seem fair, does it? It's kind of like this. If I had out here a candy bar, a package of gum, and some pretzels, and you had to make a choice, I, if it was me, I would choose the candy bar. So I chose that. And I feel like I've made the best choice out of what I can see and what I know is going on. But now I add in this big bag of airheads. And you're thinking once again, I maybe didn't make the best choice. Well, those were some hard choices, weren't there? But we can't make the choice of something that we don't know is happening. That's why we have to stay on the race. If we listen to what Jesus is teaching us, and we practice the love and kindness that he tells us about, and we follow along with the teachings from the Bible, we will finish the race and those good things will come to us. Now, when is that race finished? Well, it won't be finished until our life is over here on earth. So we have to keep on working, always learning, 
always caring about one another and staying the course and running the race. Let us pray. Dear God, sometimes the race can be long. Sometimes it's hard to stay on the path. Sometimes we'd like to take a little break like the hare did and hope that we can still make it to the finish line on time. Help us to keep on the path with you by our side, Jesus, knowing that you are walking and running and guiding us all along this race course. I am grateful that you are always with us. Amen.